Ejector pins. When and why do you need them? Welcome to another episode. Let's look at first why you would need ejector pins. Here's a, uh, a part that was injection molded. And the way you can tell is by opening up the box and looking inside. And if you see here, these are called witness marks. And this is where the ejector pins have pushed this box out of the mold. This box is, uh, has fairly steep walls, and so it's going to stick pretty well to the mold. And therefore you need ejector pins, and these are pretty good sized ones, uh, to push this box out of the mold. Of course you don't always need ejector pins, and in fact most of the molds that I've made don't use ejector pins. Here's an example. This is a part that did not require ejector pins, and these are the two parts of the mold. Now the reason it didn't require the ejector pins is because you can see here, uh, this angle for the most part uh, makes it fairly easy to pull the part out of the mold. It does get stuck on this, but what happens, and the way I get it out of the mold when it gets stuck, is by using a knife. So I'll take a knife like this and work it under the corner here and then pop this off and then it just comes out of the mold. That obviously takes longer to uh, pull it out of the mold than it would if you have ejector pins. However, if you're not making a whole lot of parts, then it's just fine. Uh, it's not really worth the effort of creating ejector pins. This is a mold that definitely does require ejector pins. You can see right here there's a fairly deep cavity and this part definitely gets stuck in the mold. The hole you see right here is for the ejector pin. So I've taken a very simple approach for, which is great for a DIY mold, and the simple approach is to put a, a quarter inch uh, brass pin through the back, and then what I did is I ground that brass pin down to about the right size so it would be flush when it was in the mold and when the pin was against the back. And then when it's time to pull the part out of the mold, I get two blocks, not these two obviously, but two other blocks. And then I get, have another pin that I put in from the back and then just give a tap with a hammer and it pushes the part out. So you can start out with a very simple ejector pin that's completely manual and requires you to tap on a pin and doesn't require anything special. It's essentially an insert and that does a great job. Here's a more complicated ejector pin system, and again, this is manually activated, so you have to actually hit it with a hammer or something else to get the pins to eject like that. Now, the one thing I did with this, and by the way, these are pushed back into place just by putting the other mold half and putting it down. Uh, and the way that I did this, as you can see, is using brass rod. I just went to a hobby store and bought eighth inch brass rod drilled holes for the brass rod, drilled holes in this, again, with a CNC milling machine, and then put this into place, made sure these were all pushed down, put it into back into the vise uh, and the milling machine, and then I, I milled out where the pins are. If you, it's kind of hard to see right now where the pins are, but if I push them again, you can see, let me zoom in, you can see that the the pins actually have the profile of the gate. So they're pushing up against the gate. And if you look down here, when I push them in, you can see that it is in fact part of the gate. So that's pushing on a part, uh, I, well, I should say that's pushing on a section of the part that I'm not going to keep. Now again, once it's time to pull the part out of the mold, I flip it over, brace this up on two sides, and then tap on this with a hammer, and that pushes the part out. The one thing I learned is that when you're using brass on brass, it can gall fairly easily, so it's probably a good idea to use uh, two dissimilar metals, and I don't really know a lot about metallurgy, so I don't really know what it's best to use in terms of different types of metals. It may also be a good idea to use some type of lubricant on that. My final example is let me work on these lights, is the most complicated injection mold that I've designed. This one is designed uh, for my larger machine, 
that supports uh, not here, but on the other side. That has uh, rods that will push on, on here and will push the ejector pins out. Sorry, on here. And will push the ejector pins out when this half of the mold is moved away. So the way this works in the machine is we have the two mold halves which align like that. And you can see I have two alignment pins. This is the fixed half, and this is the moving half. So this stays fixed to the machine. This is attached to the clamp. When you pull back on the clamp, it pulls open like this. And then there are two uh, screws essentially, which are where my fingers are here, that hold, sorry, I have to press on the aluminum, that hold here while you continue to pull the clamp back. And as you can see, that causes the ejector pins to come out. Again, I use brass here, probably not the best, best uh, material since it's brass on brass. Uh, but here's the design. Uh, I might do a video on this in some time in the future. This is something I use to make the following part. Let me zoom in. So you can see it's a fairly detailed part and it has a, an interesting uh, shape. These are represent concrete ties that are in N scale. So it's for model railroads. And these ties stack on top of each other to make a load that goes onto flat cars. If we look on the back, it's kind of hard to see. This is the side that has the eject pins on it. And here the witness marks are very easy to see. You can see it right there. This is a result of the eject pin being a slightly different height, Z height, from the, the part itself, from the runner. And that happens because when I push the eject pins down, there's a little bit of wiggle room. They're not exactly positioned. But the important thing is because the eject pins are on the runner and uh, leading up to the gate, rather than the part that we want to keep. It means that we don't mar this part at all. We have a perfect finish on this and we don't have to worry about trying to put it in an easy location. Uh, and the important thing here is you can see that this is on the same side uh, that the person will see and we can have the ejector pins on the same side. If you look at past plastic parts that are made commercially, you generally will see the ejector pins always on the back, non-cosmetic side. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. Thank you.